This lesson is about moments. Think about a door. A door rotates about a fixed hinge. In this case, and for this door, the hinge will be on this side of the door. For a door like this, at which point is it hardest to push the door open? And at which point is it easiest? Point A or point B? To try it out, try pushing a door near you at point A and point B with one finger. You will notice a considerable difference. When you've done that, draw out the door and label your result. What did you notice? Pause the video and have a go. You should have noticed that it was far easier to push the door open at point B and it was far more difficult to push the door open at point A. The reason is due to the distance between these two points and the hinges. The distance between A and the hinge is relatively small, but the distance between B and the hinge is much larger. This difference in distance accounts for the difference in the turning force. So, let's see how that works out theoretically. As you know, if it's white, you write. You can increase the size of the blank, in brackets, the turning force, by increasing the blank between the force and the blank. Have a go at filling that out. Pause the video first. And when you're done, what could the equation for the turning force slash moment be? Good. Now that you've had a go, let's go through it. You can increase the size of the moment, which is also known as the turning force, by increasing the distance between the force and the pivot. That's exactly what we saw in our example before. So if you got onto the challenge question, you should have been able to figure out that the turning force will be dependent on two things, one being distance from the pivot and the other being force. So the moment of a force or the turning force is given by this equation moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance from the pivot. The key word at GCSEs to remember is that this is essentially just distance. Further on in your physics journey, the fact that it's a perpendicular distance will become more important, but at this level, just know it's distance. And we also know that distance in this case, can be represented by a D. Force can be represented by F. And moment by capital M. This is the symbol equation. And above, we have the word equation. Now, because the unit for distance we know is meters, and we also know that the unit for force is newtons, what do you think the unit for, um, for moments is? Think and have a go first. So, the unit for moment is simply the combination of newtons and meters. Just Newton meter.
this is another very common example of rotation and turning forces in our everyday lives. This is a seesaw. And this is a very common exam question as well. Draw a quick sketch of this image. How would you describe the moment the turning force on the left hand side and the moment, i.e., the turning force on the right hand side? So, to make that a little more clear, think about the moment the turning force, the rotation, on this side and the moment and the turning force on this side. What you may have realized is we can't simply use the words left and right in this case. It just doesn't work. So we actually have to use the words clockwise and anti-clockwise. So on this side, we have an anti-clockwise moment. And because the beam is balanced, it's straight, it's in equilibrium, it is equal to the clockwise moment. So it's the force on this side times the distance on this side which causes the anti-clockwise moment, is equal to the force on this side times the distance on this side, which causes the clockwise moment. So, when a clockwise and anti-clockwise blank on an object are blank, then that object is said to be in blank. This is the principle of moments. Have a go at filling this in first. So, when a clockwise and anti clockwise moment on an object are equal, then that object is said to be in equilibrium. This is the principle of moments. You may have come across the term equilibrium before in chemistry when you thought about dynamic equilibrium. It's very similar in the sense that this beam is stable. This system is stable, just like the equilibrium position in uh, chemistry. It's not moving. Let's take another look at how moments works in the world around us. This is an animation game in which we have to balance out this system. How do you think we could do that? We have a 10 kilogram mass. To balance out the 10 kilogram mass here, where should we place it? The answer is to actually place it at the exact same distance. And we can check what happens now. Because those, uh, these two masses produce the same force and are at the same distance from the pivot, they produce the same turning force. Let's try another one. What's going to happen to this system? Pause the video and think about it. In this case, the two masses are at the same distance from the pivot, 1.5 meters. However, the 15 kilogram mass will produce a larger force than the 10 kilogram mass. As a result, the system will move in the clockwise direction, like so. What about this one? Remember to pause the video whilst you figure it out. In this case, we have two different masses. We have 20 kilograms and 40 kilograms. The 20 kilogram mass is one meter from the pivot. Where do we need to place the 40 kilogram mass 
to generate an equal turning force to the 20 kilogram mass. A very common mistake is to keep it at the same distance. However, this definitely won't work. Another common mistake would be to keep it at double the distance, at two meters. But this would simply create a greater turning force for the 40 kilogram mass. Remember, moment is equal to force times distance. So we actually need to keep it at 0 0.5 meters. Let's try another. What's the mass of this object? We can find out by placing this person at different distances and identifying where it balances out. Because the 30 kilogram person balances out with this rock, we know that the rock also has a mass of 30 kilograms, as they are both equal distance from the pivot. What's going to happen in this case? Pause the video and figure it out. So in this case, because the 10 kilogram mass is greater than the 5 kilogram mass, it's going to create a larger turning force in this direction. It's also worth noting that these are the same distance from the pivot. Let's try this final example. What is the mass of this bucket? I'm going to place the mass at different distances from the pivot. Pause the video when you've figured it out. So, we can see that the 10 kilogram mass at 1 meter balances out the bucket at 0 0.5 meters. What's the mass of the bucket? We can use the equation moment equals force times distance on both the anti-clockwise moment, which is in this direction, as well as the clockwise moment in this direction we can figure out that the mass of the bucket is 20 kilograms. I hope this has been useful. Try the questions and look at the calculations video as well.